pretty cool when you have someone uh, on your show who is uh, who has his work at the Museum of Modern Art. I mean, you know that there's a, a an artist among uh, among friends here. Uh, in fact, though, Todd Green is here to talk to us about entrepreneurship. He hasn't painted on a canvas. He hasn't sculpted out of marble and, and clay to get into the museum. The museum uh, is about the product that uh, that he came up with. Todd, thanks for being here. Thank you. Headblade, right? I mean, the first thing, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> this is about headblade. This, huh? okay. well, this, yeah. this is about you. This is about entrepreneurship, okay. but it's about headblade. And headblade is this, right? I mean, it's this product. Yes. And it has uh, it has created a life for you, and it's also gotten so many accolades. And and I'm not kidding. In in the Museum of Modern Art, did you ever think you'd end up there? Uh, as a guest or as a visitor, no. Uh, so it's funny because I went to a college, I went to Bowdoin College of Maine, and I was uh, an art major and a math minor. And it was funny because the people in, in, that I took the math class with, yeah. they all assumed that I was an art major because I wasn't good at math. And the people that I was taking the art classes thought I must be a math major because I wasn't really good at art. <laughs> so to have a, an invention, you know, I'm kind of an accidental entrepreneur right. because I had done a lot of work with technology. Um, I was a character of voiceover in computer games. But when I came up with Headblade, it was Build the Better Mousetrap. So right. what we're looking at today is the maybe fifth generation Headblade. And when Headblade, it was actually Time Magazine called it one of the top 10 designs in the world. I was still working out of my apartment with no employees. So for it to kind of just stumble on this way of uh, being well known or getting accolades. Right was just based on the design, I guess. Well, not and, and, and the function, right? I right. mean, so it's not just that. It's, it's, it's right. a cool thing to look at, which probably the museum likes. But you know, you think about entrepreneurs, the, the famous Bill Gates in the garage with his computers. Uh, I, I, you talking about saying that this was just something that uh, you came up with and working out of your apartment. This network started in Jank Uger's apartment. Right. So there, there, everything has this sort of uh, cocoon that it begins and, and, then, and then it comes out. It's about necessity, right? right. I mean, this is something you, it's, uh, you said build a better mousetrap, but this, you start losing your hair and, uh, and there's, the, there's something new that you have to do with your daily routine, right? Right, yeah. I, I started shaving my head in uh, 1991 and it was just because I was losing my hair. And what thought, level of baldness were you when you started when you started shaving? I your was hair? well back in college. So I graduated college in eighty nine right. and I used to love to get my hair cut. I used to yeah. love not really like it's it's like you love it and people talk about barber shops yeah. and the cultural societal, you know. But I used to love to go and have the lady wash my hair. It feels great. Yeah, I, yeah. I miss that. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, but then and I'd say, oh, just don't let my ears show. And I remember once the woman was cutting my hair, and my ears already did show, and she kept going like this. <laughs> you know? And uh, so what level was I losing my hair? Well, I drove out from Philadelphia to Seattle, because I was moving to Seattle in 92. And I was, I can send you a picture, but I was losing it on top. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, I mean, you you have some hair loss, but I've, I've, I was just thin on top. Right. Like when you, oh, good, good example. When you go to a nice, um, restaurant, you go to the bathroom. And back in the late 80s, early 90s, when everybody was into the halogen lights, you know, the really right, sh yeah. light that goes right down, and I was washing my hands, and, I, and it looked like I had no hair on top because the light was so powerful, and, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna shave. So I shaved when I drove from Philadelphia to Seattle because I thought nobody in Seattle even knows I ever had hair. Right, you're starting new. Right, right? so they can't say, oh my gosh, it looks too wet. And I remember I was in y Jackson Hole, Wyoming, at the Million Dollar Cowboy, Cowboy Bar, Right. I was talking to some guy, and I said, you know, it's something about my shaved head. And I said, well, my brother always said I look like a car with its doors open because my ears stick out. And he said, oh, yeah, well, yeah, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And I said, thank you. I'm very sensitive. He <laughs> says, no, now you look like convertible with its doors open. So, you know, yeah. I, I kind of just put myself in that position of I shave my head. I look like Gandhi for the rest of my life. I don't have to worry about hair loss because you go from when you say the word balding and losing your hair, yeah, it's passive, right? right? So all the late night commercials that you're too fat, right? Yeah, I mean, not just fat enough, you're too fat, or or you can't get your work done on time, or you're losing your hair. They're they're preying on that insecurity, right? right. So once you shave your head, 
And it goes back to, the, I know you're in the Kirby enthusiasm, the whole Larry David of, you're not bald. You know, when you shave your head, you shave your head. Right, right. right? So I'm not bald per se, I shave my head, which is active. Which is, which is different. There was, a, there, I got that off there, was a time, <laughs> there was a time that um, the, the men who were losing their hair who were going bald uh, didn't shave their heads as much, right? No, I mean, no. and, and not in, in the not too distant past, you would see people trying to cover it. You mm -hmm. would see toupees. You would see just cutting it so it, you know you had as much full hair on the sides as you could, right? Yeah. yeah, everything. What what when did that change? Did that change uh, as as the same way that people started growing beards? And well. I think the beard is the same, a different problem with your head upside down. It's just one of those, here's the thing. Back in the 80s, there was so much pressure to, to have a full head of hair, be over six feet tall. But, you know, when, when everything was corporate, when everything, right. now it's just a free-for-all, right? You can start a tech company today and be multimillionaire tomorrow. There's no linear path of right. conservative how to, get, how to make money. And I remember when I first started Headblade, people used to say to me, geez, you know, I wish I could shave my head, but I'm a doctor. I'd be like, well, oh, I, don't, I don't get it, right? But there was that stigma attached. And funny that, you remember the Sly Sperling, I'm not just the- Yeah, right? I'm, I'm not just the, uh, a member, I'm the owner. I'm the, not just the president, president, I'm also, I'm also a client. A client. Right. Yeah, yeah, so, that's right. Uh, about, so I guess no, but I kind of remember. Well, yeah. you, but you remember yeah. those, those yeah. ads. Yeah, I remember Sly Sperling. So yeah. the whole hair club thing, about a year ago, I get an email from a guy who says, you know, I used to be that guy. I was in their ads, I was on the television shows, I was the host, and for 20 years they kept running the same, because all those large companies that do the infomercials, they know to a T which ad works the best. Right. Right, you know, they have the call centers, they can say, okay, this ad we ran at this time slot right. with this host, and they every year would run this guy's, and they kept doing well, so he was under a contract. About a year ago he writes me and goes, I can tell you, I love Headblade. I started shaving my head about six months ago, and I'm sold. I love Headblade, and I want to do something with your company. Right. So his name's Tom Wayman, and we've just started doing these webisodes. Uh, no, no plugs, no rugs. The secret behind the hair loss thing. Right. And he had to actually call him and say, "Look, you can't. You know, I don't want to be on the contract anymore because I shaved my head. Yeah. So I think there was, and that's for for the hair loss." You don't really understand what you're getting into, or maybe you do, but it's expensive, it's time consuming, and you know the cheapest thing is just to shave your head, right? Right. So what do I think? I think societal things have changed it, whether it was Michael Jordan, Bruce Willis, Finn Diesel, all those guys, where the guy in the middle of America said, he's a white guy with a shaved head. You know, and it was, when I first started selling Headblade, deemed an ethnic product. That's Which, so interesting. Yeah. Well, I want I want to talk about how you <laughs> first started selling. So, thank you. I, uh, no, no. I, I could it bore is. you forever, but this is. This, no, I don't it, find this at all boring. I, I hope nobody else does. This is a, a fascinating. I, I love when something is needed, but I also love hearing how how norms change, and I think that's a lot about what what this is. Mm -hmm.